Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to our beloved lecturers and all my friends. Today, our group will present about chapter 6, which is planning supply and demand in a supply chain with managing a predictable variability. Before we start our presentation, I would like to introduce myself and my group members. My name is Juliana Benti Zakaria. Second presenter is Muhammad Nur Arif. Third presenter is Muhammad Hanif. And last presenter is Nurul Husna. And I will explain about responding to predictable variability and managing supply. So, let's look to the first subtopic. Responding to predictable variability in a supply chain. The meaning of predictable variability is a change of demand that can be forecasted. It will increase cost and decrease in responsiveness. This occurs when, first, we have a high level of stock out during a peak season of demand. So, we could not fulfill the demands of customer and lead to the low of responsiveness. Second, when we have a high excess inventory during a low periods of demand. So, we need to bear a high cost of inventory because we have a least numbers of buyer. All this problem can be managed by two approach, which is by managing supply and managing demand. And I will explain about managing supply. Managing supply can be categorized into two factors, which is managing capacity and managing inventory. And I will explain about managing capacity. Managing capacity can be done by a combination of this approach, which is first, time flexibility from workforce. It means that a firm use a flexible work hours from workforce in order to manage the capacity of production. For example, we have a willing workforce to do an overtime, so we may schedule the workforce and can increase the product production to meet a better demand. Second is use of seasonal workforce. It means that a firm use a temporary workforce during a peak season of demand. For example, during a food festival, we may have a high demand from customer. So, we may hire a temporary worker to join our team in order to increase the production and can supply the demand to the customer. Okay, third is use of dual facility, which is specialized facility and flexible facility. Specialized facility produce a stable output in efficient manner and flexible facility produce output in wide range in volume and varieties of product. For example, a PC component manufactured might have a specialized facility for each type of circuit board as well as flexible facility that can manufacture all type of circuit board. Okay, next is use of subcontracting. It means that a firm offer a subcontract to others' company during a peak season of demand in order to make sure that they can continue operation. Why they need subcontract? Because they want to cut costs of their company. When the demand increase, the supply should be increased too in order to match with the demand. Okay, next is designing product flexibility. A firm design product due to the changes of demand. It means that a firm are flexible to produce a product that have a demand in market. For example, a phone company may have may produce and upgrade their product due to the changes of demand in future, which have more favorable to the latest technology. For workforce in the company, they should have a multi-skill in order to make sure that they are able to adapt with the new changes happen. That's all from me. 
next slide we will continue by next presenter okay now i will continue with managing inventory and inventory capacity trade off okay for a managing inventory there are two approach that we use First is using a common component across the multiple of product. So in this first approach, the firm or company will use uh, one base material to produce very type of product. For example, we can take a uh, milk in the dairy production. So as we know, milk we can produce to be a yogurt to be a cheese and also flavor milk so the base material of this product is a milk so by the base product base material they will use to to vary the another product to produce another product so the um so the users of the milk to make a very type of product will become the demand of the milk is become the stable so the stable demand of the milk is easier to the uh, manufacturer to manage their um, inventory either to increase or decrease and this in this uh, situation the um, company or firm will increase their inventory of the milk Okay, next we proceed to the second approach, which is building inventory of the high demand or predictable demand of the product. So, in this approach, it's better for the company or firm to build or produce a product that demand can be can be predict. For example, and as we know, during the Ramadan, the demand for the sugar cane is very high. So, the company or the farm must take this opportunity to supply the um, demand to supply the sugar cane during the Ramadan. And in order to do that, uh, the company or the firm must produce or start planting the um, sugar cane 8 to 10 months early in order to supply the sugar cane during Ramadan. For example, if this year, 2020, the Ramadan will be had in April, so, and at least the company must start planting the sugar cane in the June 2019, they must start planting in order to, sub to supply the sugar cane during Ramadan for this year. So, with this predictable of demand, the company easier to manage their inventory. For example, they can they will increase increase the inventory of the sugar cane during the Ramadan. Okay, now we'll proceed to the inventory capacity and cap inventory capacity trade off. So, in this inventory capacity trade off. Okay, leveling the capacity will force um, the inventory to increase during the predict seasonable version of demand. For example, during the Chinese New Year, the uh, there are some company or retailer will increase the uh, uh, inventory of orange mandarin because during that chinese new year the orange mandarin get a high demand from the customer okay for the second point is carrying the low level of inventory required required the firm to increase their production capacity in order to cover the peak demand during the season so um that's all from me we will proceed to the next presenter thank you okay bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh
Today we will continue with the other subtopic from the chapter 6. First, I introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Hanif bin Muhammad. And I will cover three subtopic from this chapter. For the first one is managing demand. And then four key factors influence timing of promotion. And then lastly, effect on increasing demand. So let's look on the first one. This is managing demand. What is the meaning of demand? Demand is consumer desire to purchase goods and services and their willingness to pay for a specific product. So how? How can we control the demand? How can we manage, manage the demand? This is by collaboration between supply chain members on pricing and aggregate planning to get maximized profit. In this, we must know the objective or the goal of managing demand just one. The, that is to maximize the profit. So the supply chain members must collaborate together on pricing. It's mean on set a price of product and aggregate planning. Aggregate planning means as we learned in the previous class is mean uh, the planning for the future production process. This is include all the costs involved to make the product and also estimate the revenue that we will get. Then by calculating these two, we can estimate the profit. For example, we can do a promotion to manage the demand. Promotion means all promotion means the marketing strategies that usually used by the firm to boost up their sale. But before we do the promotion, we must consider these two things. The first one is timing and the second one is pricing and aggregate planning. Timing is when we will do the promotion, either in the low peak period of demand or high peak period of demand. The supply chain members must collaborate and decide or uh, determine this by doing the estimate and forecast which one, which timing is better, either low peak period of demand, give much profit to the company or high peak period of demand, which give more profit to the company. Pricing and aggregate planning. Pricing, as I said before, it is the price of product. So the supplier must uh, must set a price that reasonable and uh, a reasonable that the customer like to purchase the product because the pro the product price is reasonable. And aggregate planning. Aggregate planning means, uh, as I just said before too, that means that future planning production process that include all the costs and estimate of the revenue then we can know the profit next we will look to the four key factors influence timing of promotion the first one is impact of promotion on demand timing that we choose to do the promotion must be at the right time so that the demand will boost up or will increase then it will follow by the supply so with this supply chain members can get the opportunity to produce more product to match the supply with the demand this will give them high profit number two product margin product margin mean the profit margin per product we can calculate it by you know the price of the product and then the cost of production or cost to produce a product by minus the price that we sell to the customer and the cost of product we can get profit margin per product when we do promotion at the ideal timing we will get more or increase in profit margin per product number three cost of holding inventory cost of holding inventory or we can say as uh, storage cost when we do promotion the uh, demand increase supply increase and also the production will increase the product that uh, we produce must be stored first as storage before we transport to the other supplier so the supply chain member or the producer must calculate the cost either the cost is too high until it affect the uh, it, until it affect the profit or not if it affect the profit 
Uh, so that is not the correct timing to do the to do the promotion. So the number four is cost of changing the level of capacity. As we do the promotion, the demand increase, the supply increase. We also need to increase the production. To increase the production, we need to increase the level of capacity. When we increase the level of capacity, of course, it incurred the cost. So the producer must consider it, whether it affect to the profit or not. Uh, if it affect to the profit and give less profit, so that is that is not the correct timing or the ideal timing to do the promotion. For example, of increase in the level of capacity is by hiring new worker or improve the machinery. Okay, lastly, effect on increasing demand. When the demand increase, this will effect on these three. Okay, for the first one is market grow. Market grow means increase in sale and increase in market size. For example, this company, company A is produce and sell mass. Uh, previously, they just uh, sold in this country. And nowadays, at the worldwide demand increase, they expand their market share and export to the other country. With this, they can increase their sale and also they can increase their market share market size or expand their market share. Okay, number two, stealing share. Stealing share mean increase sale but at the same market size. So, this company just focus on the current market size but they 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 put the high target uh, for the sale. Okay, number three, forward buying. Forward buying mean same sale, same market size. For example, we plan to buy shoes for the next three months. But for this month, there is promotion. So the price is low due to promotion. So we will choose to buy the shoes for this month compared to the other three months. So we can conclude that forward buying is we, we buy something earlier than we plan. Okay, that's all for me. Then we continue with the other presenter, Rul Husna. Thank you. Okay, next I will continue with implementing solution of predictable variability in practice. Okay, for the first point is coordinate planning across the enterprise in the supply chain. Okay, in order to make sure the predictable variability is success, the entire chain must work together towards their goal, which is to maximizing their profitability. But, however, this method is quite difficult for the entire chain to play to plan collaboratively. That is why in the solution, incentive plays an important role as marketing has incentive based on the revenue and the operation has incentive based on the cost. Okay, next, within a supply chain, the profitability are not judged by the overall of the supply chain. It is judged by different enterprise of their own profitability. So, it is clear that without focus on getting the company to work together, the supply chain will return suboptimal profit. The incentive must be aligned. So, uh, even the collaboration is difficult, but the payoff are significant. Okay, next is for the second point, take predictability into account when making strategic decisions. Okay, this is usually the predictable variability is not always taken into account when making strategic decision like what type of product to offer, should or not to build the new facility and sort of pricing structure that a company should have. So, when making decision, a firm must always take this impact into account. The success or failure of strategic decision can be determined by the level of profitability where it is affected by the predictable variability. And lastly, for the third point is preemptive. Do not just react to the predictable variability. Okay, company often have tendency to focus on how they can react effectively to the predictable variability. This responsibility often falls on operation, which try to manage supply to deal best with the predictable variability. Both supply and demand provide the best response to the predictable variability. Actions such as pricing and promotion that manage the demand are preemptive and often dominate 
the marketing. So it is important for marketing and operation to coordinate their effort and plan, where it will allow a firm to preempt the predictable variability and comes with a response that will maximize the profitability. Okay, lastly, I will explain. I will recall back about the whole chapter that we had learned. Okay. Both supply and demand will help to improve the synchronization in supply chain in the face of predictable variability. Okay. As we know, both supply and demand have their goals, which is to increase the profit, to maximize their profit. Okay. To manage the demand, the firm or the company must use pricing and promotion decision. As we know, the timing for promotion are very important as it could impact the demand itself and to manage the supply, the firm or the company must use or manage their company by managing their capacity through the use of workforce, subcontracting, dual facilities and also the product flexibility. And to maximize the profitability, the aggregate planning must be used when faced with the predictable variability in the supply chain. Okay, to handle the predictable variability, the supply chain must coordinate the management of both supply and demand. This is require the coordinate planning across all stages of the supply chain to select aggregate plan that will maximize the supply chain profit. Okay, so that's all for the chapter 6 and if you guys have finished watching our video don't forget to do the quizzes that we had prepared for you guys in the google classroom that's all from us thank you